How's that for production level value right there? More for your money. The best production money can buy. And there's no advertising here and nobody's paying money for it. So that's what you get. Um, okay. I mentioned in another video um, about getting your rifle ready, getting ready to go shoot silhouette. Maybe you've never tried it before. And I talked about having your scope ready. And then, of course, someone messaged me and said, my scope's not ready. What do I do? All right. It's simple. Don't panic. Um, if you haven't put scope on a rifle before, get somebody to help. It's not rocket science. Uh, it's easy enough to do. Um, but if you don't have somebody to help you, I'm going to try to help. All right. Get rifle. No good without a rifle. You're going to mount it on some sort of mount on top of your rifle. Self-explanatory BS. We don't need to go into that too much. Um, you want to make sure your scope is level in relation to your receiver. And hopefully there's no interference uh, or no things that get messed up between the mounts and the receiver to throw things off. Um, you, you know I'm the champion of cheap equipment. This is one of those places where you might want to spend a tiny bit of money on equipment to make sure things are well machined. Uh, when you tighten them, they're going to stay tight. Um, this particular setup I have here has uh, release mounts on it with the little thumb screws. Really not necessary. I'm probably going to switch to something else uh, fairly soon. Uh, I got to wait for a time when I'm not doing things like building a complete rifle range at the club I belong to and stuff like that. It's taking up what tiny amount of spare time I have. Um, but it's looking cool. So, you know, that's another video. Uh, the next video. The next series of videos will probably not be in the opulent garage of doom because it's getting a little bit boring back here. Um, every single video is from here because, uh, quite frankly, I film them on rainy days when I don't have a whole lot of farm work to do. If I went out on the farm right now in this lovely muddy clay soil of West Tennessee, I would slip and fall on my keister and uh, be sliding down the hill into mud puddles. So today, kind of not so much. I am doing some dry fire practice. I am doing a lot of dry fire practice because um, I have a goal set. Totally different video, uh, but you should have some sort of goals. My goal this year is to attempt to hit master score. I've been off by two so many times. Uh, I don't keep count while I'm shooting because that messes my brain up. So then when I get to the end, I missed it by two every single time it seems to be. It's just... It's probably some sort of a sub-level mental block that I'm not uh, honestly cognitively doing it, but it just seems to be every time. It's just, you know, I take a breath at the wrong time and I miss those two targets and I don't get master score. It's kind of frustrating. It's kind of like hitting nine rams all the time. I keep hitting nine rams. Not ten. Nine. I need nine. I need ten damn rams for my grand slam. But that's, a, that's another video in itself, what's a grand slam, but we'll do that another one. So, scope set up. Scope set up. I even made myself notes so I wouldn't do what I just do, did just there and uh, get off the rails. Um, so you've got your scope solidly mounted. Uh, and realize when you mount a scope for the first time on a rifle, then you start making adjustments and seeing where things are and where things line up or don't line up you may be adjusting, readjusting, reinstalling that scope 15 times. Don't worry about it, don't get frustrated. Um, when you go to attach everything down, don't crank it down real tight because you're gonna be uncranking it and changing things back and forth. Uh, we are offhand shooters, so our eye relief, our point where, hopefully the microphone still picks it up, the point where, you get your big fat cheek on there and you're looking down the thing and you get a nice sight picture, your eye relief, your distance from here to here. So you're going to have to work on moving that scope forwards and backwards. And it's going to be different than what you would set up for the bench. Because remember, uh, we're all offhand. We're shooting silhouette. If you shoot silhouette, something that's not offhand, it's not silhouette. 
unless you're doing that lay down pistol thing, which I don't do. It's cool, but I don't do it. But you know what I mean. Silhouette is offhand. When I see YouTube videos, there's a little behind the scenes bitch mode. When I see YouTube videos that say something like bench rest silhouette, unless you're shooting out to a thousand yards, which is another thing I don't do. That really is legitimately some bench rest silhouette there because they're shooting to a thousand yards. But for us regular, ordinary human silhouette shooters, the game is small bore to 100 meters, uh, center fire to 500 yards. We're shooting offhand. Uh, it, it, it's a game where it's not all about the equipment, it's about the human. Uh, it's 5% equipment, 95% your brain. Well, 90% your brain, 5% your body. How's that sound? Anyway. So it's setting up for eye relief. So you may have to move that scope back and forth a few times until you get it right. You're going to probably set up some dry fire targets. You're not worried about whether or not it's on the target and it's dialed up perfect. You're just worried about uh, how the sight picture looks to your sight when you bring it up every time. Boom, there it is. Okay, it looks good. Boom, there it is. Oh, it's blurry. I, it's not focused. It's not right. I'm going to move it back and forth. I know your scope. Some of them have focus. Some of them have a side wheel focus. Some of them focus up here like mine. Uh, you know, know how it works. Get out there and practice even before you set it up. Uh, you know, practice with somebody else's scope. Uh, practice with a totally different rifle that you wouldn't use for silhouette. So you learn how to use the scope. It's going to have dials on it. You know, clicking the dials. Um, the easiest way I have set up scopes, I set up a lot of scopes. I set up scopes for other people. I do scopes all the time. People are always asking me which is a little painful, but my favorite tool, this is not a product endorsement. This is not a review. This is the tool I use. It's from a particular company. My thumb's over the label. It doesn't matter what company is, as long as it works good, as long as it's well machined, it functions well, it'll fit inside. Make sure you get one that'll fit inside 22 long rifle bore, because a lot of them are larger. Um, and you're going to stick this in the bore. You're going to uh, turn the laser on. You're going to reflect it off of something. I'm blind now. No, I'm not. Um, the easiest way for me to do it is to use my laser, set it up on a laser target. Now, this is laser comes out probably like uh, at 50 yards. The actual laser dot is pretty huge. It's probably like 4 MOA, so it's a pretty fat dot. Um, you're going to use that fat dot. You're going to set your setting. So say I would be doing it at 50 yards because I have all the yards marked off in my pasture because I got a lot of places to, to, to dry fire and set things up. I'm lucky. Well, I worked really hard to get that lucky. You know what I mean? Work real hard to buy the piece of property to do the crap you want to do. But I can just stick a, I stick an old license plate out there at 50 yards because they're reflective. So you get that nice, bright, reflective back. If it's a nice sunny day, uh, you're going to still be able to see that laser. That's pro tip number one. Actually, it's non-pro tip number one. I'm not a pro. Get it? Yeah. Um, so then I'm going to dial up. I'm going to dial over, windage over, elevation up and down. I'm going to get on to that 50-yard mark. Now, we don't shoot at 50 yards. We shoot at 40 meters the first target or 40 yards for the first target depending on where we shoot so um, we may use uh, we are going to use because we don't use any we don't use a pencil and paper anymore even I don't do that we use a ballistics program that's going to predict our ammo our rifle and we're going to take that 50 yard reading we're going to dial down a couple click 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 to where our value would be supposedly for the 40 meter zero. Then, you know, we're testing this on the bench. Uh, normally I say shooting benches are evil because they breed bad habits. Um, but this we're doing on the bench because we need a solid, flat, locked down surface. It's this, this is not about the human, this is about the machine. We have our rough 50 yard zero. We dial back, depending on what the ballistics program is, we have our rough 
40 meter or 40 yard zero. All right, now I say rough because the laser is not going to get you there. The laser is going to get you close. And point two on that one about just being close, um, your bench zero is not going to be the same as your offhand zero. It's going to be slightly different. Not much. Click here, click there. Um, then if you've never used that scope and that rifle combination before, you're not just changing the rings or something, you know that something, it's a brand new setup. You're gonna do a box drill, and people say, hey, what the hell is a box drill? A box drill is this simple. I even drew a box. I'll use my laser pointer to point at it, just the wrong end. I'm gonna take the first shot. You know, hopefully the first shot is somewhere in here because now I've refined my zero, okay? And this doesn't matter. You can do it at 40 yards, 50 yards, and go back from there. Box drill is a box drill. Um, I'm going to click four clicks to the left. Fire a shot. Hopefully it's over here. I'm going to click four clicks up. Hopefully it's up here. Four clicks. Actually, four clicks here will get you right in the middle. Hopefully I'm not screwing this up too bad. Another four clicks over. Four clicks down. And then I want it four clicks over and return to the same spot. Now that's proving your scope, proving that you have repeatability in your scope. You want your scope to come back to the same place every single time. Now, if you don't want to do a box drill, you could just, uh, you've used your ballistics program to calculate that I need, just throwing out a number here, 36 clicks in order to go from 40 meters to 100 meters to hit that target. Okay, the difference is 36 clicks. All right. So I could set up a target at 40 and a target at 100. And I could get in the hole, you know, get in my good zone on 40, all right? Click up the dial slowly that I know I need to get to 100. Shoot at 100, shoot a couple of shots. Not rapid fire, one shot, count to 30 seconds, fire another shot, okay? Then reverse, negative clicks back down to my 40 meter zero. See that that shot comes in that zone, you know, that we're doing this in the bench again, so everything should be locked down. You know, I should be able to snack that next shot right on where I did it before. Do it again. You know, you, you're using four or five rounds every single time you, you do this drill. Um, it's cheap, it's easy. Uh, you're proving that your turrets you know, the actual mechanism inside your scope is dialing up to where it needs to be and down to where it needs to be. Um, in 99% of the cases, the rifle that you're using for silhouette, you're only using it for silhouette or you're not using it for much else. Um, in the past, I've used that rifle for things other than silhouette. And then when it comes the day before game day, I have to get everything reset back again. It's a pain in my butt. So now I pretty much only use that for silhouette and I have other things that I use for other things. Um, where I live, what I do on a farm, a rifle is a tool, just like a hammer. It is something you need all the damn time on yourself. It is something you use all the time. Um, uh, and it's one of those funny things, people always say, well, why do you need an AR-15? I actually carry one almost every freaking day around with me. It's light. I'm able to get rid of coyotes and foxes, have a quick follow-up shot. That's why you need an AR-15. Not everybody needs one. That's up to you. I like mine. I have several. <laughs> They're fun. But anyway, going off the rails again. Um, laser box drill. The other thing I want to, I, the other two points I want to make. Point number one, when you get your dials and you know that you've got your different ranges, like we said in the previous video, you've got some sort of a, a, a dial up ready. You know, you've got your numbers, got my numbers, okay? Um, Wow, it's really out of focus. What's going on with that? And I actually have uh, little stickers I made. 
to help me remember quick when I'm on the line um, to change my focus for the different animals. Um, on match day, depending on where you are, sometimes you got to be really quick about getting your stuff together because they are going to move you fast sometimes, way faster than I would want to go, but I'm a casual guy, not everybody is. So, <clears throat> you have your dials, you know what your dials are. Stick with your dials, okay? Your zero may change time to time with weather. Gets a little cold, gets a little hot. My original chicken zero may be slightly different. Um, shoot in the winter, shoot in the spring, summer, fall. You're gonna start to know uh, if you have to change anything. I don't. Um, once I get my chicken zero, I go back to chicken zero. And as long as I'm back to chicken zero, which I'm gonna check uh, every morning at the beginning of the match. I go to a match, it starts at whatever time, I'm gonna try my best to get there an hour early, if not earlier. And yeah, you drive five hours to go to a match, now you gotta get there an hour early. Yeah, you do have to do that, because you gotta get that chicken zero. And then it's nice to get a few warm-up shots, you know? And a lot of times they'll give you a half an hour for practice, because it's all it's practical to do is give you a half an hour for practice. And they'll boom, 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 you gotta be ready, get that chicken zero, then I'm ready to go. Okay, chicken zero, I know it's 10 clicks to pigs, 10 clicks to turkeys, it's 16 clicks to rams. If it's at 100 meters, it's 12 clicks to rams if it's 100 yards. I know that. Uh, know the value of your dials. Some are eighth minute dials, some are quarter minute dials. Know what that is. If they're eighth minute, then you've got twice as many, you've got 20 clicks to be between chickens and pigs, say, as an example. Your numbers are gonna be your numbers, not my numbers. Now, once I got those dials, I know my dials. I am not gonna go to a match and start spinning the dials radio style and get myself completely out of whack, okay? Those are my numbers. I know my numbers. I stick to my numbers. Uh, and it becomes just a natural thing. You do it every match, you know what you're doing. I'm trying to help out the new guys and girls here who want to get ready. I'm not a pro, I'm helping you, maybe you will become one, okay? Uh, last thing is when you're setting up scopes for air rifle silhouette, okay? The distances are roughly, pretty much half of what they would be for regular silhouette. When I say regular, I mean small bore silhouette. But the targets are smaller. Where's my ram? Now, targets are tiny. See, this is my thumb, okay? This is the chicken, okay? You're shooting something the size of your thumbnail at 20 meters, 20 yards. Small bull ram. Air rifle ram. You know? So the distances are closer, but your targets are smaller. Watch this, gonna shake the camera and put it on. Now, because those, your air rifle, now you're using probably a similar scope to what you'd be using in small bore. Just take into effect whether or not if you've got a Springer air rifle, that you use a scope that will stand up to a Springer. Because you've got a lot of Slap back in the air can destroy a scope. So just know that you have the right scope for the right air rifle. That's just one of those non-pro tip number 12. Um, your air rifle, uh, setting up that scope for the closer differences, distances, you may need to shim the scope. And what I mean by that is actually putting a piece of material in the back ring on the bottom of the back ring to take and move that scope just up slightly. I mean, it's, we're talking slightly, we're talking the, 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 the thickness of, what I used to like to use was the old 35 millimeter film negatives, which you can't even get anymore. Um, maybe somebody can, I can't easily. Uh, you could be using a very, very thin piece of plastic. I have little shim pieces of plastic in my toolbox. Uh, we're talking very, very minor shimming on the back. 
And the reason is because you will run out of dial. You will not be able to dial down far enough to be able to impact chickens, be able to dial all the way up to impact rams because you know, it's air rifle, it's going slow. So you're really sloping that. There's a lot of dial involved. There's a ton of to get to the rams and then be able to get back to chickens. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to, if you find yourself zeroing it and it's like, I can get it at the 45, I can't get it back down to the 20 because I run out of, you know, it bottoms out. You got to shim the back of the scope to cant it up, to tilt it up a little bit. Solves all the problem. But that's just one of those things that there's no manufacturer that's, well, there's probably some, but most manufacturers aren't designing their scopes to be able to hit things in that kind of close range, uh, unless it's a specific, I'm sure there's some specific air rifle scopes. I'm not the air rifle expert. I do air rifle for fun, air rifle for practice. I'm not like the biggest air rifle junkie nerd there is out there. I just, I'm not. It's fun as hell. And it's great practice, but I'm just not, it's not the top of my list. So, that's your video. Scope set up. Next video should be from the range, the actual range. I'll see if I can include um, little views of the range at Tennessee Sports Foundation, how awesome it's coming together. Um, and I thank all the people who have been helping me with heavy equipment, with welding, with just building crap. Because if I did it all myself, it would take forever. And that's it. Remember, there's no ads on this channel. So... If you feel like supporting it, go right ahead, find the link. You'll know where to find me. Look at all those paint cans back there. Somebody suggested that I give away a free t-shirt. It was pretty funny. I cracked up when I read the email. Give a, I should give away a free t-shirt if somebody can guess. I think we'll do that. Uh, how many products, where's my finger? How many actual products are sitting on these three shelves? One, two, three. We won't count the oil shelf down below. Uh, you know, because you got to have all the different oil for all the different machinery and all the different cars. And my wife's cars take special oil because she's like that. Um, but her cars are nice. Mine are just... But anyway, <laughs> one, two, three. Uh, in the comments below, if you feel like it, uh, we'll do it for 30 days after I post this. And somebody will get a t-shirt. So yeah.